Oh, you know what? It might be the conflicting chunk that we have to put in now. The one that we had before. Raban is being attacked about him allegedly threatening Oleg. Yeah, yeah. What are you planning on doing against the FTP? Right. Oleg doesn't think highly of the nation and never wants to go there. But Raban says that he wanted to find work there. Hmm. Again. Raban Vart considered cooperation with the Pargesian army to protect the school. Oh. Hmm. If Raban still has ties to the Pargesian army, would that be somewhat of a motive to find out that Oleg is a informant? Cause... Yeah, that... Mm, let's try putting this one too. Yeah. Wait. Army protection for a school? Seriously? Things must have been bad, or someone must have been really worried. Yeah... There was a bomb shelter? Let install an autonomous shelter in the school's library. This is really extreme. Uh, I mean, might as well. Might as well. Oh! An autonomous shelter at a school? Seems a bit overprotective if you ask me, but then again. Considering he thought about getting the army for protection, this pales in comparison. It does. Well, if he lost his legs in a bombing, then he might be... Oh, something new? Then he might be very conscious about stuff like this. Let's see what we got here. Holy, whoa! Okay, no pending article draft. Did it get published? How do I get to the front page? The front page of... Uh, we gotta go back to the people's... Voice? Home. Yeah, crime statistics continue to get faked. Real criminals do not show up in statistics. Delacroix presents new crime statistics in a way favoring her politics, but who are the real criminals? I like her Photoshop job. <laughs> criminals are degenerates who wear striped clothing, blah 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 blah. Of course, it is in the best interest of the media and the government to push this myth. Headlines sell papers, and National Security of Security, Catherine Delacroix, has certainly given out quite the headline. Proudly, she presents her statistics that these so-called criminals have been kept under control by her successful policies. But, taking a closer look at the policies, one cannot refrain from wondering, who may be the real criminal? After all, she is the secret dairy of security. The Blaine administration has been touting a policy of surveillance, a straight violation of privacy for years now, yet hardly any of the nation's citizens seem to take notice of this fact. Are Blaine and his despicable followers included in these crime raids? I highly doubt it. Yeah, we read earlier, on the same day that they got bombed, they were like, oh, everyone, it's okay, crimes are happening less than ever, so that is kind of suspect. Back to Blabber. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, hold on. So last time we read up until here. Now someone's saying, Never thought you would've gone this far. I always knew you were crazy, but kidnapping a soldier just to get some PR for your dumb blog is completely mad. And then he says, I am not responsible for the disappearance of Oleg Bakay. Besides, this man is no angel either. I have reason to believe he was involved in this horrid attack on my school back in 2010. Many children died because of him. I know that he was one of the people in charge during the Prava school attack since, knowing what would happen, he did not let his daughter attend school that day. Oh. Unknown data chunk. Let's find the unknown one first. I have reason to believe that he was involved. Oh, this one seems important. If he really believes that, this would be a strong motive. Good. We can't work solely off what Raban Vart believes, though. We need to clarify whether there are any more hints of Bekay being involved in this. Hmm. When... When did the school attack happen? What was the actual date? 2010. He did not let his daughter attend that day. There was a search database to look for... Where was it? Where was it? Right here. Records of attendance. So, if we can find out what date 
the attack happened, then... Yeah, then can't we... Can we figure this out? If the daughter was actually at school that day? Hmm. Someone who initiated an attack on the school, now becoming an informant for the nation. I really am pretty confused about who is actually the good guy here, or... yeah. Okay, back to the people's voice. An unsung hero that you need to know about. Ah, now he's showing that he can't walk. My brother. Oh, no, no, no. Ilya wrote this. He's writing about Raban. My brother is a hero, and this article will prove it to you. We have not been maintaining this blog for a while. I would now like to renew it by telling a story. The story of an unsung hero that you simply need to know about. The story of a person who never got the credit he deserves, which I will now change. It is the story of my brother Raban, who wrote most of the previous articles for this blog. Raban has told you about our long and troublesome journey from Parges to the nation, about how we had to live in a refugee camp for an inhumanely long time under terrible conditions, about why we had to leave our beloved hometown. You, my dear readers, have, in a way, been on this journey with us, but he has never told you about the fact that he has lost his ability to walk during the terrible events in Parges. He has not told you about why he made the sacrifice and what a true hero he really is. Raban is not a man who likes to share his personal stories, but I have decided that it is time. Especially if you are a reader from our home country Parges, you ought to know this about my brother. The incident that finally forced us to leave Parges was a tragedy, especially in the eyes of my brother. Prava Secondary, the school that Raban was teaching at, and had in fact helped to build with his own two hands, was bombed to the ground. A place of learning, a place of safety, a place that Raban had always offered the Pargesian children the opportunity of a good education, was nothing more than smoldering rubble. During the bombings, most of the children from Raban's sixth grade class had been trapped in the school garden shed, and they had not been able to make it to the safety of the library, which they had been using as a bomb shelter. Against what everyone told him to do, Raban ran out to the shed and saved these children from certain death in this hellish attack. He did not rest until every one of them was safe in the library. Without his brave escort, they would not have made it to the shelter, where they were able to wait in safety until the bombing was finally over. The shed was destroyed only minutes later, but Raban himself, he had not made it safely back before the bombs dropped. He was buried under rubble for almost a day, clinging to his bare life, until we finally discovered him. But he had paid a high price, his ability to walk. I cannot tell you how much I admire my brother for so much bravery, and although I know that he would never have permitted me to write this article, I have decided that you, dear readers, simply needed to know this. Mm, he's a good brother. And yeah, if people are attacking him and his wife about how he might have kidnapped a military officer, I think the brother wanting to clarify that, hey, my brother can't even walk. It's totally understandable here. Do I believe this? I... I do. I do. Because what we've read so far from the school stuff, we can tell that Raban does care about the children. I do believe it. Saving others while risking his own life. Now I see why his followers treat him almost like a religious figure. Well, Agent, I think it has become clear that Raban Vart is only a shadow of his former self. His actions today are what matters. That's true though, yeah, because him being a principal, that was 2010, seven years ago. And ever since he came to the nation, he's become a much more jaded person. Reactions to an unsung hero. Wow, just wow, you are a true hero. I only did what I had to do. <laughs> this person earlier, weren't they criticizing him? People's opinions swing so fast on social media. If you do something wrong that people think are- Or uh, if you do something that people think is wrong, everyone starts dogpiling you immediately. The FTP should pay for this. It was them who were responsible for this horrific attack. Oh. Leading newspaper of the nation. Pargesian school hit by several missiles due to FTP siege. Yeah, 2010, December. December 7th, 2010. We got it, the date. A secondary school in Western Parges was bombed by rebel organization Forces of True Parges. Prava. 
A school in Prava, a village in western Parjas, was hit by several missiles on Monday morning, Monday afternoon. According to an official statement on behalf of the nation, or um, according to an official statement on behalf of the army of the nation, the attack was initiated by rebel organization Forces of True Parjas. Intel revealed that the group was harboring key officials who were hiding in the basement, which serves as a makeshift bomb shelter for the Prava secondary students and their families in times of emergency. As reported by the National Army, the rebel group had started the attack as National Army soldiers had surrounded the school, requesting the officials to surrender immediately. The explosion, which was initiated by the FTP, caused the school's principal, Raban Vart, to be buried under concrete and rubble for at least 24 hours. Oh, why would that be conflicting? That's weird. He was saved after rescuers continued to search for survivors among the ruins. A spokesperson of Angels of the Nation, a volunteer team who provide development aid in Parjas, stated, Mr. Vart was injured on Monday, December 6, 2010, and was buried at least until late Tuesday evening. If it had been any longer, he would certainly have died. His survival is a miracle. Thanks to the courageous aid workers, the school's principal will soon recover and be able to teach again. Unfortunately, the bombing caused many deaths nonetheless. The total number of victims is yet unknown. This is kind of strange to me why the angels of the nation would be helping. Oh, I guess, yeah, this was back when Parjas was really in dire need. It's just weird to me because they're from the nation and the disaster happened in Parjas. Okay, but it might be part of the peacekeeping mission though. They were just volunteering. Anyway, this is pertinent information. Very pertinent. Now we go back and visit the... Yeah. Oh! So now someone's like, the FTP should pay because they did this, because that's what the newspaper said. But Raban's like, no, it's not the FTP. The National Beholder is nothing but a lying, manipulative brainwashing machine. In reality, it was a military bombardment that wounded me severely. Ha. Huh. So is it... Was it a military bombardment or an explosion by the FTP? So the difference here is, was the whole thing started by the rebels or was the whole thing started by the government? That's really the crucial difference here, huh? You have my utmost admiration, sir. It takes incredible courage to risk your own life to save others. You are an exceptionally good person. Please do not flood me with compliments. All I want is for my home country to be safe again, and saving those children was the least I could do for Parjas. Oh, this is from a long time ago too, I just realized. I thought it was recent, but no. We're going back in time on the Twitter account. The thing I admire the most about the Parjesian hero from People's Voice? Raban Vart is so incredibly humble about it. He almost seems to not want anyone to talk about this. What a genuinely admirable person. I'm simply overwhelmed by how fast the story went viral. Please forgive me if my responses sound a little dismissive. I am still trying to cope with all of this attention. Yeah, he sounded super reasonable back then. But at some point, he's become quite radical. Anyway, we gotta go back to the database here. And we can find out if Oleg is really related to this then, according to if his daughter's here or not. List of attendees. Raban was at school. Yeah, we see it already. In math class. Radka Bakay. His daughter was in school on the day her school was attacked. But Raban says... Raban says, I know that Oleg was in charge of the attack because he didn't let his daughter go to school that day. So this is fake. Yeah, I think I believe this one more because it's the school system and there's not really an inherent bias in this because why would there be? Yes, let's put this one. Which means that a lot of what Raban says it might be fake regarding the bombing. Yeah. If we go back to... No, let's put this one in. Yeah. Wait a second. If Begay's daughter was present, then we can be pretty certain he wasn't involved in the attack. With Vart as her caretaker, he must have been aware. 
Meaning, there must be more behind Vart's threat. Yes. Yes. Things are slowly but surely becoming more clear. What did I want to look at again just now? <laughs> um... The call, the call, yes. I think Raban Vart might be calling Oleg about the bombing here. And Oleg is like, listen Raban, it wasn't me. I don't know anything about what happened there. So instead of Raban lying, it might just be that he doesn't have the facts straight. He believes he's right, so he's not lying, but it doesn't mean it's the facts. Earlier during the quiz when we started the game, it was saying there was a point that said there are two sides to every story. But in reality, there might be three or four or even five. You know, your side, their side, and the truth, right? <laughs> so, oh god, this is... Oh, there's a lot to look at here. But if Raban's lying about that... We're now at the point where we need to put in some information again. <laughs> How do we know what he's saying is a lie or not? Yeah, he thinks that Oleg is a part of it because Oleg is in the army and he's saying the army... Why would the army... Why did it attack the school anyway? Was it just sort of caught in the crossfire? Hit by several missiles. Okay, so the army, the official statement, is saying that the attack was initiated by FTP. This one is hard. I know that he lied about the other thing, but... Yeah... What if he believes it's true? Is there any information that could tell us any more hints about this? We know that... Okay, Oleg was probably... <sighs> does that mean that Oleg is not involved? Okay, yeah, I think it does. I think it does. So this must be fake then. I think this is real. The one in the newspaper. And we know that he hates mainstream media, so... He just... Maybe he just doesn't believe what people say. If Oleg was responsible, he would definitely take his daughter out if he knew about it. Let's put in this one. Really? Oh god, I don't... <sighs> yeah, yeah. The FTP is a ruthless bunch, that's for sure. We also have to be really careful about putting in information here. Like, see, we have all this information here, right? But the actual chunk that we put in is just that one sentence. So Ampleford can only see that one sentence. And sometimes it's, um, it's easy to forget that she can't see the other stuff. Yeah, Raban is being attacked. Not important. Okay, I think we might need more information again. Which we are... I don't know what this influencer tab is. Maybe it'll come up later on. We need to go back and look at some facts. There was the other conflicting chunk that we needed to make a decision about. President Puppet. For all we know, Kazard is being controlled by the nation's shady administration. Yeah, we can put this one in, I think. More about his beliefs. President Puppet. I've seen the memes before. The nation would have zero factual benefit from control over Parjas. Hmm, I guess we're treading into territory where facts aren't given any weight. Remember that our goal here is to find a motive for Raban and find how Raban was able to contact Oleg. Not making too much ground on this so far. The nation burn. Hold on. What have you done, Raban? What's here? He said he wanted to find work there. Yeah, I, I think I'll put in this one, for the reasons I've mentioned already. Oh, that? Wait. Raban sympathizes with the forces of the true Parjas. Is that why he's trying to pin the bombing on the military? Because that makes total sense. Terrorists fits the picture. But... He sympathizes with them despite that they are responsible for the attack on his school? He doesn't believe 
Yeah, he doesn't believe that they are. Oh, but Ample Four doesn't know that. I have to keep straight in my head what I know, what Ampleford knows, and what I'm actually putting into Orwell here. Good lord. This is weird. This is so weird. Okay, this was posted in 2006. If we go back to Oleg's records of military stuff. 2006. He joined the military in 2006. And then he was protecting Prava against the FTP during the Civil War in 2006. Promotion? Promotion? Received the Medal of Honor for saving civilians. Yeah, that doesn't seem like someone who would kill people. Why would he bomb people? Do we want to put this one in? It does show that he's a good character. He has a good character. Yeah. 2010. Wounded in combat. Absent. Came back two years later. Reinstated as captain. Is captain worse than corporal and sergeant? I don't actually know. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. Corporal is the second lowest rank. Earlier, there was something about how Raban was suspicious of Oleg because he came back and he ranked up so quickly. I'm just wondering about this gap here. 2010. That's... that's the year of the bombing. He was wounded in it. Yeah, maybe that's what happened. If we go back to the people's voice... The panel, admin panel. He left for the nation, then all of a sudden, he returns and ranks up to an officer in the army? Hmm. This chunk I am really not too sure about, but I think to make progress, we probably have to put one in. Who is lying though? Who is lying? God! God, help me God! Oh. Two people, they could both be lying. Okay, okay. Is that so? Hmm, doesn't exactly account for his loyalty to us. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. I don't know what is... Are you trying to tell me that Raban was saying the truth here, but then Oleg was lying? Or did he just change his mind? <laughs> God, I don't... I don't know. Holy crap. Okay. He's being attacked. Arrival. He was assigned a refugee camp near Bonton. I guess we can enable that just to have it around. The nation burns again. He has definitely not been calming the situation in the nation. Yeah. And then faculty? Teaches English and philosophy? We don't need this picture. This picture is old. Yeah, I guess we can keep adding. Not really super pertinent, I suppose. Janus, Hargesian, Citizen, Captain, we know this already, there's not really that many chunks, am I missing something crazy here or no one got a call, nothing, I guess I'll just keep putting in more chunks that I think are necessary until something happens, records of attendance, can we find another date, this is probably too yeah, the school wasn't even built at this time. Yeah. Wheelchair. April 12th? No. His phone number. 
Good lord. Good lord. I guess I'll put in the one where... I mean, there aren't really that many left. I guess I'll put in this one. Oh. Raban started calling Ilya. Ilya Vart speaking. Brother. Oh, he hey Raban. I, I didn't expect you to call. I I'm getting ready for work. I have no idea what's going on with the donations. I swear they were working, and I haven't changed anything in the back end. Forget the donations. I need your abilities as my co-writer. You must write me an article. Uh, right now, is it important? It is. What do you want me to write about? There has been a second assault in Bonton, at Stelligan University. Another one? Oh, wow. They really have got a situation here, don't they? We need to cover it. Draw attention to how the government is failing its people. I'm not quite sure if I'll be able to pull it off at work. I feel like they're watching me already. Do you stand with me, brother? Or has the nation's corruption and wealth finally swayed your sympathies? Ravan, I stand with you. I've told you this. Then I have faith in you, brother. Are you preparing a statement about these threats? This has to stop. Are you gonna say something? Yes. Ah, great. Finally. And it is going to be the most remarkable statement I have ever made. The destruction of the cooperation between Cassett and Blaine. Destruction? How? Patience, brother. It won't be long now. Take care of the article. Okay, uh, I will do my best to get it done for you. Give me, give me about an hour for the draft. I'll put it in the back end. Good. I'll be waiting. Until later. Yeah, until then. Abilities as my co-writer? Co-writer. Huh. They both know how to write, right? So why is this guy not writing himself? That is kind of... Okay. You know the thing about conflicting chunks? Like, oh my god, I'm just thinking about how many potential mistakes I've made so far and it's worrying me. The thing that I'm kind of worried about is that as we're looking through all this information, we're creating a narrative inside our head. And we're submitting information based on that narrative, which may or may not be real. So really, at this point, there's Raban's truth, Oleg's truth, my truth, and the actual truth. And who the hell knows what the hell is actually going on here? Anyway, you are making a statement about the destruction of the cooperation between Kazard and Blaine. Okay, that sounds like you're cooking up something. Ha. Huh. We got a little hubris going on, haven't we? No such thing will happen. Kazor and Blaine working together is the best thing that could have happened to Parjas. Why destroy it? He wants to. We don't know why, but he wants to. We got a document just now, didn't we? National Immigration Database, Vart Raban. Old picture, forget it. Social Security Number. Uh... That matches. Personal devices. He came here in 2011. Oh, lots of good information here. Yeah. Principal occupation, teacher. Current occupation, none. Notebook. Take it. Excellent. With that, we will be able to get a glimpse directly into the lion's den and probably useful data on our targets. How do we get this article again? I don't even remember. That phone call kind of threw me off. Mm. Came here in 2011. I guess that is good information. But I'm rapidly becoming aware that it's past 5 p.m. already and we're gonna get off work soon. <laughs> yep. This one too. 
Well, right after the safety bill came into effect. Bad timing from their point of view, I guess. Okay. Uh... Desktop? The people's voice. Speaking out loud what needs to be said. Freedom Plaza to do. To do? Oh, he's making this like super exaggerated bombing picture. Okay. Pictures? Rugby team? Was a rugby coach. Not really that crazy. That was from today. Oh, that's from today. Where was he? Why is it so messy here? Does he sleep at work or something? <laughs> oh, Oleg Bakay has been talking to President Kazar directly. Oh, interesting. Why do you have this picture? Raban Vard cooperated with Oleg Bakay at a school. Huh. That seems pertinent. Summer 2013. Brother, Ilya, Karen, Raban. Philosophy class. No, no, no new picture. Uh, there is some info. Hmm. System. Browser history. Perco leaks? Operation Flying Dog. Knowledge is power. We give the power back to the people. Operation Flying Dog is a document about how the Pargesian soldier Oleg Bikay was arrested by the soldiers of the nation after an incident during the Civil War. Oh, only to be released again later and placed as a spy within the Pargesian army. Oh. The document shows how the administration of the national government pulls strings inside the Pargesian army in order to enforce their power in Parges. Ooh. Yeah, they know. They know. People know. Uh, definitely Ample 4 needs to know about this. But at the same time, time. So I'm gonna read everything first. Perco Leaks is the database of classified media which we perceive from anonymous- Oh, which we receive from anonymous sources. We believe that people have a right to know certain things, and through this platform, we provide this knowledge, which would otherwise be censored or entirely kept from the public. So far, we've never published false information, and the documents we provide are always closely examined and analyzed prior to publishing. Our most prominent leak so far was footage of torture and murder during the Pargesian War, committed by soldiers of the nation, clearly showing multiple violations of basic human rights and corruption. Our goal is to provide the public and journalists with information that needs to be published and is vital for people to know, especially at times when their leaders lean toward corruption and secret power through tools such as online surveillance, like what I'm doing right now. Damn. Torture and murder committed by soldiers of the nation. Hmm. Oh, we can upload information here. Documents about official operations sanctioned by the nation. All other uploads will be rejected. I don't have any documents right now, do I? No. Let's read the other websites first. Hold on. Back to... Oh, here. Bonds and Maps? We can't click on this one. Look up. Searching Oleg Bakay Pargesian Army. National Beholder? That's just the main website. Is anti kazar blog involved in Pargesian soldiers' disappearance? Same thing. Okay, we gotta tell her about this. Damn it! I knew he must have been revealed. This changes everything. If Bakay's secret is out there, then that's how Vart came across the info. But this alone doesn't appear to be enough of a motive. Agent. I hate to say it, but with this new perspective on the situation, we have to put Bakay's loyalty into the question. Do you think so? Because I've been toying around with that idea, but you've kind of been giving me feedback. That makes me feel like I've been wrong, so I wasn't too sure. If you find any hints of possible disloyalty of our agent towards us, you need to let me know immediately. I sent it to you already. Yeah, I sent it to you. The one about how he's like, I would never go to the nation. Oh, 
Then that must be that must be okay then. Whoo! Whoo! Okay. Okay. We have very, very little time in here. I don't know what time we get off work, but I don't think we have that much time. Back here. Oh yes! We know that Oleg has been talking to President Kazard. Important, important. Kazard is the president of Parges. What? He talked to Kazar directly and didn't inform us? Damn it. I'll have to assume this shows disloyalty towards us. Otherwise, he would have reported that in. Okay, I'm feeling a little better now. This whole time, I've been feeling like I'm writing a test and I don't know what any of the answers are. <laughs> but right now, I feel like I at least have 70% on the test. <laughs> Draft. Once more, the innocent will be punished. The assault on Stelligan University is a horrific, got some typos in there, and terrible crime. But we all know not the real perpetrators will be punished for this. It is not up to me to speculate who might have caused these terror attacks. But one thing is certain, the Pargesian people will be blamed and are the ones who are going to suffer. Especially the ones living in the nation. No matter what their citizenship really is, what hardships they might have suffered themselves already. No matter how many prejudices and hate they have already faced in the nation. These are the people who are going to suffer, not the real perpetrators. Yeah, and then later on, Raban is gonna add more information to it, right? Okay. Well, huh? There was more in here. More pictures? I don't know what this guy's doing with this. Browser history. Trash. A token of my appreciation for your blog. Money. Oh, Raban. I found something you might be very interested in. And that's how he got the link. I've done some digging through the document, and there was even a phone number of a device they issued to this guy. Oleg Bekay. Wait, didn't we already write down this number? No need to thank me. This proves what you have been writing about for such a long time. Make everyone see it now. Your fan David Jones. David Johns. I thought we already wrote down the... It's a different phone! Oh no, this is UID. This is the actual number. Um... Okay, 10 minutes. This was from 3 days ago. The number for Bekay's protected office phone is out there? This can't be happening! This is how Raban Vart reached him, and who knows how many other people have his info now. This is a complete disaster! You have gathered all we need. I will get an intervention team ready from a local base near Prava to go and look for Bekay. They're on their way. Now let me try and make sense of everything we've gathered. I need to decide how we should approach this. Raban Vart was a school principal back in Prava, Parges. He was also the teacher of Oleg Bekay's daughter, who went to fight in the Pargesian army. The school was attacked by FTP rebels. Vart managed to save the students by leading them to the shelter he built, but he lost his ability to walk. From the info we've gathered, it's unlikely Bakay had anything to do with the attack. Vart blames him regardless, probably because he found out Bakay is a national agent through a leak. A leak which Oleg Bakay presumably caused himself. What a disloyal fool. Mm, maybe we could have found information about how this was leaked, but we don't have time for it. 6 p.m. Maybe that's the cutoff line. Now Bekay is hiding out somewhere in Prava for whatever reason. No one told him to hide. And there was no secret plan about hiding either. This is it. The theory about the situation we're facing. We will make sure to deal with it accordingly. Can I check this for now? Oh, I can't check it right now. The intervention team is in place. I'm switching over to command, and I'll let you listen in via the listener tool. Okay. Yes. Echo 1 reporting. Come in, Command. Command is reading you. We have arrived at the designated location. What is it like? Sorry, Command. I don't quite follow. The location? Tell me what you see. Looks like ruins of a school that has been hit by a large explosive. Possibly an airstrike. Maybe artillery fire. Harva Secondary. Hmm. Huh. 
Can you traverse the ruins? Affirmative, but the damage is catastrophic. Are you sure the target is around? Absolutely. Move in and keep me posted at all times. Describe to me everything you see. Understood. Echo Squad, move in. Entering primary hallway now. The hallway has been severely damaged. You can see the sky right through multiple stories. Some parts are completely caved in. Proceed with caution, Echo Squad. The damage definitely originated some time ago. There's vegetation spreading all over the place. There are some adjacent rooms that seem rather intact. Echo 2, Echo 4, clear them. Rooms are clear. Lots of bags lying around. There were still some geometrical drawings on the chalkboard. The place was clearly left in a hurry. Moving into the next corridor. There's... Oh, shit! Oh. What is it? Part of the ceiling gave way. Oh. Nearly hit one of our operatives. Status, Echo Squad. Dust off. Ugh. Can you proceed? Affirmative. Do it. Roger. Moving on now. Status? All clear. No traces of the target. Some doors are blocked by debris, but there's zero chance they have been opened recently. Listen, I need you to find the target person. He is around. There's a basement stairwell that we haven't checked yet. Moving there now. Watch your corners, Echo Squad. She's incredibly insistent. I get that she wants to find him, but we don't actually know he's there. Not much left here either. The projectile went right through half the building like a hot knife through butter. Hate to say it, but we may be out of luck. Wait, found something. There's a hatch leading further down. Looks used recently. Finally, proceed. Affirmative. This is the school's library. Still intact. The bomb shelter. Someone put a lot of effort into turning this into some sort of autonomous bomb shelter. And they succeeded. Even the power is still on. From what I can tell, this thing even has working surveillance cams on the walls. Huh. Peculiar. Maybe Bekay is able to use them. Proceed with caution. Definitely wouldn't want to. Movement! Get down! Get down! Echo Squad, contain the target! It's the target. It has to be. He's here. Oleg Bekay, we know you're here. There is no way out of this shelter. Throw your weapons into the middle of the room and come out from your position with your hands on your head. Visual on target. Identity confirmed. It is Oleg Bekay. Your order. Bekay has been proven to be a traitor to the office. Whoa. He is a liability as long as he is alive. What? Terminate him. <laughs> we didn't prove anything. Report in. Target down. Oleg Bekay is dead. What? Very well. Mission accomplished. Make sure the area is secure, then disengage. Understood. Echo Squad, move out! What the hell is happening? <gasps> Why did she have him killed? Why? We never even got... We thought that he might have been disloyal, but we never proved anything or disproved anything yet. It's definitely suspicious, but she just... What? Ample Ford is really weird right now. Oh my god. If you suspect that he's actually not loyal, wouldn't you take him in for questioning, especially because you have a whole team of people and he's there by himself, so you could have captured him for sure. Unless if he was gonna kill himself. But you just killed him! Like, what? By the way, if it hasn't become abundantly clear, because I keep talking and she keeps talking and everyone's talking here, Ampleford has been talking to me the whole time, via the little prompts, right? But I can't say anything to her because that's a design of the whole Orwell security system. Because you don't want the handler and the person doing the surveilling here to have direct contact like that. So we can't tell her what we think of her, but we can make assumptions. 
I am not feeling very good about her right now. What the hell? What? We didn't learn anything. Oh, oh, we actually solved everything. I thought we didn't. Shit. I'm sorry if I shocked you there. McKay endangered our efforts and our other agents by extension, even you. We cannot tolerate that. This is bullshit. This is complete bullshit. You want to find out how much information he actually gave away, if he gave it away voluntarily. Killing him doesn't mean that the information that's out there disappears. I would have warned you beforehand, but I feared you would have second thoughts. We must not be hindered by emotions. You will learn what it means to be a part of the office. Take this as your first lesson. With time, you will. TVP streaming live. Oh, by the way, this entire conversation here, I thought it was really, really well done. It really made you feel like you were part of the action in real time. I really love how they added voice acting in this one. What the? This bastard, the people's voice. Raban Vard is streaming right now. You need to see this. Okay, let's go see it. What now? The government. Whoa! Oh, shit! Oh, that's what the picture was! That's what the picture was! The government of the nation is lying to you. I hereby present. Present. Present you? Actual proof of this. Remember! Raban's PC. Not this one. Uh, this one. We were looking at this, being like, what is it? Is it his office? It was taken today. That's freaking Prava. That's the library, the bomb shelter. That's Oleg. Oh my God. Shit. My dear followers. Yes, this is exactly what you think it is. I found Oleg Bakay. What you see before you is an image obtained from a surveillance camera feed from the ruins of my old school, showing him among soldiers of the nation. These highly trained professionals cowardly shot him, a soldier in service of the Pagesian army while he was hiding away from them. Now as shocking as that image may be to you, the heinous nature of the national government is laid bare before you. Through their propaganda machine called the National Beholder, they dared to make their false allegations against me and the people's voice as a whole. They claimed I'd be responsible for Bakay's disappearance when it was them all along. But why would they murder a fellow soldier when President Kassat and Prime Minister Blaine are such close friends, you might ask? Oleg Bakay was the person responsible for the attack on Prava Secondary, the school I have been principal of a long time ago. False. And they knew it. They knew the moment he'd turn up dead, everyone would blame me. They took a life, only to shut me up once and for all. But the people's voice cannot be silenced. So what is there to do for you, my dear followers, against the oppressive force of the national government and the Kassat regime? Do not listen to their corrupt and manipulative media outlets. Do not fail to remind Kassat what has transpired here today. Do not let them sweep this under the carpet to pass the buck, to influence you with such outrageously false information, to take a life, to manipulate your thoughts. Speak for yourself. Or you may be next. Stand up for your rights and resist Kassat. Resist Blaine. Let's retake our country from President Puppet. Oh my god. We know he's spewing lies there because we know that Oleg wasn't responsible for the bombing. Yes, we... How... Those guys! The guys that... The squad that went in! They even mentioned the camera, but we didn't... Ah, we didn't do anything about it! How the hell did that happen? Where did he get those pic... Oh, no! No! The surveillance cameras! God damn! This... This will have severe repercussions, I fear. We will have some containment to do. Even though we are facing a lot of trouble, 
You have done well. For now, you may complete your work for today. That's just a transcript. Oh my god! This looks like the nation is killing a random officer from the... Pargesian army? Is that how you say it? But they... But it's not like everyone knows about the whole informant and the being disloyal. Now we'll never find out. We'll never find out. Worst of all... Okay, we have to think about Raban and Oleg's relationship though, because... Did they fake the phone call? Why would Oleg go to the bomb shelter where Raban has a direct... He's literally just watching him the whole time. So it feels like they are still good friends. And was this whole thing... Mm? Are they actually good friends though? Because would Raban just let Oleg die like that? The whole thing is just very strange. Very strange. And if we look at... Oleg's phone. Remember about the whole... Moving to secret location to conceal my whereabouts? Who told him about that? There was no plan. Why would he go to the bomb shelter in the school? Too many questions and I fear that some of these answers might be lost to us for good because Oleg is dead. Shit. Okay. Oh, no, stay logged in, stay logged in. Can I still put in more chunks if I want to? Yeah, cooperated at school. I mean, we could put it in just to see. Oh, it seems like we don't have to go off work at a certain time. So we maybe we're not actually as time constrained as it tries to imply. Was a rugby coach? I don't think we need this one. We don't care. But let's just go through the last remaining... Oh, shit. Oh, it's a... Oh, there's more! Oh! Once more, the innocent will be punished. Terrorist strikes Bonten and Pergesians are blamed. This was the draft earlier. What do they want, these terrorists? They want to promote terror to cause public outrage, fear, and societal unrest. They want the people of the nation to live in fear, and more specifically, they want to use this fear against the people. It is not up to me to speculate who might have caused these terror attacks, but one thing is certain. The Pargesian people will be blamed and are the ones who are going to suffer, especially the ones living in the nation, no matter what their citizenship status is, what hardships they might have suffered themselves already from the national exploitation of their own country, no matter how much prejudice or hate they have already faced in the nation. These are the people who are going to suffer, not the real perpetrators. Welcome to a fair and just, developed country where everyone gets what they deserve. Welcome to national justice. These people are using... They are using... They are definitely manipulating the public as well. They're like, don't be manipulated, but they're doing the exact same thing. Exact same thing. Shards, shards. I don't think this is actually relevant. I really don't think it is. I mean, we could put it if we had time, but... Sure, it doesn't even matter anymore. Oleg is dead. Whatever. Now I'm going into like a, let's upload everything we can mode again. Okay, this really doesn't matter. Holy crap. Oh my god. We never even got to find out if Oleg was really loyal to us or not. Jesus. Uh. Alright, I think that's enough for today. Based on the data you submitted, we have learned the following. A lot of information. Yeah. Our agent Oleg Bekay has gone missing. The online newspaper The National Beholder has received a recording of a telephone call. Yeah, I think we should remember that we received this somehow too. Like, somebody leaked it all on purpose. Between him and Raban Vart, right before his vanishing. 
the office decided to intervene and look for Oleg Bekay with the aid of Orwell. Intervention After having located Oleg Bekay, we sent in an intervention team to retrieve him. He was located in the ruins of Prava Secondary School. A trap Raban Var released a photo of our intervention team's actions through surveillance cameras on the people's voice and blamed the nation for eliminating a Parjesian officer. Raban Vart. I guess we should have saved the other pictures if we could, but whatever. He was the last person Oleg talked to. He's the editor in chief of a blog. He's responsible for the current protests against Kazart. We froze his income source, the donations. He seemed unhappy with Oleg's disappearance. Was he? I'm not so sure about that. This might be fake news. Yeah. He immigrated to the nation together with Ilya Vart, his brother. He blames Oleg for the attack on the school he was a principal of. He got a lot of followers for saving students from the attack. His school got attacked by the FTP, leaving him disabled. Oleg is an officer in the army. We tracked him to a hideout in Prava. His role as an agent was leaked publicly. We evaluated him to be probably disloyal to our cause. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. And again, I really don't like how Ampleford made that snap judgment. If we didn't kill him, this wouldn't have happened. According to our research, we concluded that he cannot have been involved in the attack on Raban Vart's school. He was killed by the intervention team on our order. This is probably gonna not do anything. Yes. So, Oleg, Oleg, Orwell, Orwell Ignorance's Strength has three episodes in total, and they will be releasing bi-weekly every two weeks. So the next episode will be March 8th. And the last one will be March 22nd. Man, I'm really glad to be back in Orwell. I missed how thrilling this game can be. Even though at the core of it, it's all just reading text and stuff. Oh, I feel like the difficulty level is a little increased from the first one. Maybe I just don't remember it so well anymore. But this one, I felt like for the majority of the episode, until everything just kind of tied together toward the end, everything was kind of like, oh, I'm not really sure what the hell I'm doing right now. And maybe that's a reflection of how processing this much information really is too, because what's the truth? Is there really such a thing as the objective truth? It's really hard to say, and even as the person controlling the Orwell security system here, I feel like I can totally be biased because of, for example, what Ampleford tells me too. If she says stuff like, be careful, Raban Vart can be a very dangerous guy, and he lies a lot, then I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm on the- I'm in the same team as Ampleford, so I trust her. So immediately, I go into looking the information thinking that Raban Vart lies. That's not necessarily the case, right? And it becomes more like, um, you're looking for the facts you want to look for because that's how people are. <laughs> very, very difficult to actually identify the truth here. If there really is one. I feel like for the second episode though, maybe we want to pay some attention to Ampleford because what the hell is going on with her? We can't communicate with her, but it'll be pretty cool if we can actually investigate her. Alright, well this was the first episode of Orwell Ignorance's Strength Thesis. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed playing it because I am like, I'm all riled up right now and I can't wait for the second episode to come out. Let me know if you have any theories on how the hell we're gonna wrap up this mess, if you have any theories on what's gonna happen next time. And I will see you all very very soon. Bye!